Hi, Georgina. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm all right. I've been fiddling around with the book again, and um, we're going into chapter two in the Healthy Witch, so by T.J. Perkins, and the, it's um, about the elements this week, the elements as they pertain to you. And I'll read a little bit uh, now and again from the book, and uh, we'll uh, I'll highlight. Uh, ask you uh, to highlight things because we, we also got the witches wheel or the pentagram as the witches or the Wiccans know, pagans. So it's lovely because we can use this book for more information like oils and things like that. So we're also going to discuss a spell later on. So I don't want to take too long because otherwise uh, it's too hard to load up. OK, here is the pantogram. As we know, it represents the elements. But have you ever thought about how the elements relate to your body and organs and how all the co that connects to your digestive problems and physical ailments? Let me show you. And I'm just going to show for the people the pantogram. I hope you can see it. You see that it's north, south, east and west, air and uh, water, earth, ether, I think. Uh, no, fire, water, spirit, air and earth. OK, um, we start with spirit and then it goes on to um, how can I fix? Uh, hang on a minute, earth and then we go so um, spirit is north, um, earth is east, um, and I thought that was water. Let me have a look. Go back. We've got spirit on the north, east we've got water, then 25 past um, we've got fire, then 25 two is earth, and then we've got air at 10 two, or quarter two, and then we're back to spirit. OK, so um, and uh, it it explains every uh, element also uh, resonates with an other part of the body. And this is the part of the workbook. So I'm really excited to do an, uh, one element um, today and uh, to discuss that. So we've got spirit. The top of the pantogram is spirit. This is where the liver and the gallbladder preside. The gallbladder is the liver's partner or uh, partner organ, and it's integral to the harmonious function of the body. The liver has control over the heart and a little less control over the kidneys. If the liver is taxed to the point there it, where it cannot filter out toxins going in, then that will cause liver failure. Once liver failure begins, trouble for the heart, kidneys and thyroid shortly follow. Fix the liver and you'll fix the heart, kidneys and thyroid. And that is what I meant when I did the introduction, biology. So that is the, not only the organs, but a bit, bit of biology, which makes you more conscious of your body, your inside. And then we have, how do I know if I have the beginnings of liver failure? Now, like we said, uh, TJ Perkins isn't a professional doctor or dietist. She has experienced this, so we always foremost advise you, whoever is watching, if you do suffer from ailments and you have questions, go to your GP. Then we have the little square surrounded with a green squiggle. Uh, overall, body aches and pains accompany by excess amounts of trigger points in your muscles, legs and glute, gluteus, glute, what's that? Glute. Glutes, glutes. it's uh, glutes. a muscle that's in your legs. 
Yeah. Okay. I never knew that. If these muscles are hot to touch or hurt when barely touched, then they are inflamed. Reason. If your liver is so overworked and cannot flush out toxins, then those toxins back up into your body. They get into our cells, which go into your bloodstream, which goes to your muscles, and then the muscles will cramp and spasm, thus causing you overall body aches and pains. Everything will hurt, lower back, T-bands, knees, necks and arms, neck and arms. And then we've got a picture of lavender, um, and that is also very soothing for external use and in oils um, and then I go into this little book and I go to my oils um, and gemstones as well let's have a look it's a pity they haven't got a pause button on on uh, Skype because I oh know we keep coming through trying to find everything. Uh, page 143 has got the oils on. Yeah, I'll go to lavender. All right, anti uh, depressant, calming and healing, physically and mentally. Balancing helps ensure restful sleep, immune builder, and for love. So that's what you can use in spells or in your bath oil or anything like that, or in a candle burner, the oil burners to make it peace mm -hmm. and smell nice and refreshing. Okay, how do I know if my liver is not happy? And then you get uh, uh, symptoms and uh, how it feels. I'm not going into that because that's for the workshop. What causes the liver to uh, fell. Taking medication for long periods of time. This can be prescriptions or even uh, aspirin of any kind, pain relief uh, pills, Tylenol, food allergies, toxins from food that you eat or drink, and certain herbal supplements. Um, perhaps hepatitis as an illness or other viruses. Then we quickly go into the magical associations and that could be, uh, uh, for example, the eye or tendons. It is also um, a, a, a time of year uh, that I see here is spring. So stay calm because everybody gets excited and gets that feeling when spring comes. So calm down. So use a lot of lavender or rose water or, or rose oil for staying calm. Then we also have the element of wind here um, is the environmental factor. And then we can we could discuss this. Uh, what is happening in your environment. So uh, that's why I'm mentioning this. Have a look what is happening in your environment. Is your environment stressful? Then take time out, go out into nature, go in the wind, blow away the old cobwebs, use your creative mind with all these types of energy. What do you see in nature? The color green. So that's the color uh, associated with the liver and sour. If you have a sour taste, that could also be uh, something to watch out for. Uh, the direction is east. Though spirit is all around us, we are talking about the liver direction. So the, li the liver is directed to the east, which is here. If you're sitting like that, it is the east. Yes. Yeah. And it also gives you a time that the liver is usually very sensitive, but I'm not going into that. I just want to keep something really mystical for the people that yeah. want to join the workshop. And then we've got the crystal. A phantom, for example, clear red or yellow, very powerful tool for new age. 
In healing work, it's used as to disperse congested energies. Yellow appetite treats the liver, pancreas, gallbladder, and the spleen. And so it starts uh, talking about it as well, what it does, and then how can you fix the gallbladder. Um, I won't go too much into this. Like I said, this will be discussed in the live sessions. But are you ready for this? I know you can do it. Here are some suggestions. That is what TJ Perkins says, like don't drink too much coffee, drink more water, detox. And there's also a key, everything in moderation. The, my mum used to say the word too, too much or too little is not right in all things. Then again, we have the plan of action. And that is why you need the jotter so that you each week you can jot down and keep it up to date and see how your liver or gallbladder is doing and how you uh, are feeling jotted down. If you can do it even from day to day. Then we go on to the um, element earth and earth is uh, at the bottom left hand corner of the pentagram and then we can go back to the pentagram. I'm just going to flip through the earth just there. That's where earth is and if you have the book you can follow it. Okay and uh, the earth um, mainly is connected or represents the stomach and the spleen and the spleen is also on the solar plex with the sh a yellow chakra the solar plex that's the chakra for happiness and joy and then you go uh, it explains in quite a bit of detail uh, what the spleen does and what the stomach does and uh, how uh, your immune system is also the lining of your stomach, for example. And then we have the, uh, um, how do I recognize if my stomach is happy or my spleen? Uh, what causes the stomach uh, or spleen to failure? And then we've got the magical associations. How can I fix my liver gallbladder issues? Uh, because they are also intertwined with the uh, stomach and spleen and we've got the uh, also a tarot card for the stomach and the spleen for the stomach it is the chariot and I can relate to that because the chariot is is as is, is being a driving force It's like a car and you need petrol in the car so that's why the stomach is the petrol tank of your body. You need to eat to burn and make energy so that you can keep on going. And I think that's really fascinating with combining the tarot in this book in this way. Like the oils and um, uh, what you call it, the stones, the gems. And we didn't get a tarot for the, I think, for the spirit. Was there not? No, I, I don't there think was one. so. Let's have a look. Yeah, the uh, justice card. Where did you see that on page twenty-four? Uh, yeah, it's just above the crystal association. Oh yes, the justice. Yes, that's nice balance. Okay, that is spirit. Yes, justice, thinking, spirit is air. Right, I see how it's working now. Last yeah. week, or <laughs> right at the beginning of the series, when we did the introduction, I started to think in tarot just because of this book. And do you I remember? Can, and yeah. you, do you remember that I made a lot of notes on the yeah. th on the thirteen rules? OK, and then we go yeah. to 
and then we go to water, which is the urinary uh, bladder and the kidney. So not only um, emotions. So, and this goes more into also how do I know my kidneys and bladder are not happy? For example, loss of hair or forgetfulness or urinating frequently. And um, the uh, air, uh, hang on a minute, this, this was water, wasn't it? Yes, water. And water is 10 past two on the wheel, just there for anybody that wishes to know and see. And then you've got the plan of action again. And then we go on to air and air is obviously Gemini because the Gemini is the lungs and large intestine. So, and that goes also um, into discussion that these two uh, organs have very close energetic relationship with each other. And you've got two, right? Again, Gemini. So let's have a look. And then it goes into uh, magical associations and how you can fix it. And it, wow, I didn't even know that. The card, the lovers, that's Gemini. Yeah. Ah, you yeah. could even you could even associate it with this with the de uh, deity, it's Archangel Michael, because he's a he represents the third yeah. chakra. Yeah. So you yeah. see, see how I, I love this because it's it's uh, motivating you to think deeper and to be creative. It's also the the card of death. And the card of death is um, the large intestines transformation. Yeah. Because once you eat, you transform into an energetic yeah. ball of fire. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, so that is air and then it goes into plan of action again. And then we've got fire and that is the bottom right hand corner. Twenty five past there. And now you get uh, also a little bit more information, heart slash small intestines, and also the calendar uh, um, of the pagans or Wiccans. I can see that now. I might have forgotten about that, but I think she's gently building all the information up. Yes, with each element. Yeah. So um, we've got the llamas and water is the Yule and Yule is New Year, isn't it? Yes, yeah, Yule is, oh. um, but it actually happens at Christmas time. OK, for everyone else. <laughs> and we've got the Ostara Beltane Spring Equinox, that is spirit and air is the full uh, fall equinox, that's autumn. Um, and late summer solace is the spleen and stomach and that's earth so you can say the pentacles is um, if you're a tarot reader you can use these uh, times as um, the time of year but if you are a tarot reader then you know that uh, fire is summer which it is in this book as well water winter earth uh, is late summer um, and because they've got more elements here, they've got five here instead of just four. And uh, air is the fall equinox, that's autumn. And spirit is spring equinox. Right, so that is uh, again a lot of information. And then on chapter two, we have the summary. Up to this point, yes, this field guide seems a bit like a diet book, but I haven't put you on a diet, nor have I given you exercises. I've shown you what to remove from your daily intake in order to feel better and relieve misery and pain from the inside out and how to apply the knowledge to your magic. 
once you begin to feel more pain free then you will be able to add exercises of your choice and diet if you so choose but mostly you will be able to focus on your witcheriness so you can better serve the goddess and, um, and that is how she's closing all this chapter up um, as I said in the beginning of this guide, I encourage you to continue to go to the gym or massage therapy, acupuncture or do yoga or go to your chi uh, chiropractor. These things along with the field guide should work hand in hand to make you feel better. In other words, come into action and go out running or go for a walk every day, even if you haven't got a dog take the neighbor's dog <laughs> and but come into action and go out there get yourself fit and she's also got a picture of meditation yoga yeah. or meditation and then we go into chapter three so that is before we move on, there's just something that I wanted to point out that I've only just noticed as you're reading through the different um, elements. Yeah. The order that they're in yeah. is actually in the same order that you use when you're drawing a pentagram for your um, your circle casting as well. So you're building energy by doing them in this order because of can the way you, that she's can, laid them out. Can you do that um, in the air? How yeah. So you start at the north, go down to 25 past, yep. and then you go up to 10, 10 to 10, and then you go to 10 past 10, and then down to 25 to the hour, and then you go up yeah. to 12 o'clock. Right. Yeah. Yes, because I can see by the picture, they cross in different ways, I see. Thank you for that tip. That's okay. It was just something I noticed as you were going through it. Oh, well, that's what we're here for, to learn from the witch. <laughs> from, the wick, <laughs> from the Wiccan. <laughs> Thank you. I've learned something again. Yeah, I thought it was brilliant because as you're working through each section, you're, you're building the energy and the, the, the well-being that you're trying to install in your body as well. Yes. Um, but uh, thank you for putting that uh, out there. But obviously, that's what we're aiming for, uh, to bring you back to your centre and into your strength. Um, and, that's, and this is actually a book, like I said in the beginning, uh, to motivate you. You, were, you hadn't decided what you were going to do. Have you already decided? Uh, looking through the elements, I know that I need to start eating slightly healthier and exercising more because there's certain parts that I need to focus on and I've noticed that the foods that I've been craving like um, mushrooms, garlic and there was something else on one of the lists as well it all lines up with an issue that I've got that yeah. needs working through so I was already okay. being drawn to the food that yeah. I need to be eating well, the, she doesn't give any recipes as such, um, but she does uh, somewhere in the book. I can't find it. I will make sure that I find it for next week. Uh, she goes into uh, like greens, roots and something else. And I think that might be just before the um, chapter uh, on the uh, festivals. So I'll, I'll have a look for it and I'll let you know next week because I want to okay. include that in um, the workshops as well. Eating healthy, but on a budget. And so uh, perhaps stimulate people to make a recipe um, or if they have a recipe to share it with the people in the room. So uh, I want to budget it for uh, low incomes. That is my idea because you don't have to spend so much money to uh, be able to um, make yourself or keep yourself healthily maintained. Yeah. And before we, 
um, before we close off this week, um, I just want to uh, mention that we're going to the festival Samhain. And that's Halloween, another word for Halloween. I just um, learned that this week um, because uh, I'm doing, I'm using my uh, everyday witch cards and my transparent uh, cards. And once we, um, once we get to the Samhain festival, the day, I'll work it out the episodes. I think we'll be there next week. Um, and I want to just go also into the um, equinox, fall equinox, and that was Ma Bon. I just wonder. So, and I like the name Ma Bon. It sounds French. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Let's have a look. Lamas. Mabon on page 130, 13, and then it's already 26 minutes. So okay. I'll just quickly read it so that the uh, viewers know what the fall equinox is. Well, we all know it is the autumn, and we've just gone into Libra. There's three on the 21st. It's usually every month on the 21st. We change zodiac sign, so we're in. Li we're going to Libra, then we're going into autumn, and it is a fall equinox, a Mabon, in the Wiccan calendar. And I love uh, that this book is given. Both books are um, saying more about the calendar of the Wiccans, and this is the harvest of Thanksgiving. And we do have Thanksgiving in America in November. I think it's the 4th. I might be wrong. This is the second harvest and falls on the autumn equinox, a time for balance between light and dark. After this ritual, you will begin to notice that the days are shorter and nights are longer. This is a great time to analyze your actions of the past year. Determine how successful all your magic rituals and energy outputs have been. This assessment will help you to get goals, set goals for the upcoming cycle of seasons. It's also a good time to figure out any mistakes and problems that may have occurred. Then use this information to develop a magical solution. Decide on a resolution that will commit to a Samhain. Beautiful. And we close pumpkin. it off with a pumpkin. So that was for this week. Thank you very much again. And I hope to see you next week. Okay. Okay. Take care. Bye. Love and like and be blessed. Thank you. Thank you.